Good morning guys, welcome back to another video or welcome if you're new here. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that boyfriend and I just got back from our Dallas trip. Can you hear his licking? Guillermo. Boyfriend and I just got back from our trip to Dallas. Um, and of course I had to go to some independent bookstores while I was there. Sorry, I just woke up so my voice is kind of croaky. I was able to visit two that were like within, I don't know, like 10 or 15 minutes of our hotel. That was the Poets Oak Cliff Bookshop. I've also just seen it's, it's called Poets Bookshop. Um, and then also in Terabang Books, which was really awesome. Before we get into that, um, I do have some clips from the zoo. So the zoo was really fun. Um, it was spring break, um, so it was very busy. I don't know that I have any clips that really show just how packed it was. We were warned by a woman on the phone. I called about our discount like ahead of time. She was like, so it's supposed to be good weather and it's spring break, so like try to get here before 11. Well, Dallas is like a four hour drive um, from where we live, so I was not about to get up at like 6 a.m. or whatever, and it was, it was cool. I felt like a lot of the animals were like napping or like <laughs> kind of far away from like the viewing area Areas. Anyway, the zoo was okay. We got in um, for half price because we have a membership to our local zoo. And then we did also do the aquarium. I will say it was very immersive. It did remind us a little bit of Wonders of Wildlife in Springfield, Missouri. Like once you go deeper into it, they the way that it's like designed does make you feel like you're in like a Mayan temple or something. It's really, it was really cool. They had a lot of things that weren't like you don't typically see in aquariums. Like they had a lot of birds and like monkeys and sloths. It was more rainforest than aquarium. I feel like it should be called like the Dallas Rainforest or something like that. I don't know. So the first bookstore that we made it to was the Poets Bookshop. That one was tiny. I was not expecting it to be so small. You know, when you go to like tour a home and the pictures make the rooms look giant and then you get there and you're like, oh, this is like actually kind of small. It's just one room. I think maybe the size of my living room, but it was really cool. And their selection was very curated, which I loved. So there was actually quite a few $2 radio books, which is like a small indie press. They're like a family publishing company. I have read their books before and they have blown my mind. I don't remember how I first discovered them, but don't get up there. You're gonna knock everything off. Get out. The Orange Eats Creeps was the first book that I read by them, that I discovered by them. It was so wacky and weird. I remember reading like the first paragraph and being like, what is this? Um, their whole like mantra is they publish books too loud to ignore. So I've known about them for years and, and loved them for a really long time. Um, and over the years I've bought books by them, but completely forgot about them recently um, until I started seeing books um, on their shelves at Poets Bookshop. I didn't buy any of them because I had I haven't like read reviews or anything. I'm definitely quality over quantity. It kind of put them back on my radar. So there are some that will be on like my spring and summer TBR. But what I actually ended up picking up was Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kawaii Strong Washburn. This one comes recommended by Noelle Gallagher here on YouTube. I remember her talking about this quite a while ago now. It came out in 2020. I hadn't heard about it or seen it until she talked about it on her channel. And I was like, what? Like it's the title, the cover, like it's very interesting. And it takes place in Hawaii. So when I saw this one on the shelf, I was like, you know what? That would be a good like spring, summer read. I have never been to Hawaii, would love to go one day. Um, this will have to suffice um, until I'm able to actually like go on vacation one day. Essentially the synopsis talks about a boy who is, um, I think like tossed overboard or something like that. Like he nearly drowns and then a shark actually brings him to shore. Um, and that's like the event that sets off the plot. I've never read this author before, um, and I believe he is a native Hawaiian. Yeah, he was born and raised on the Hamakua coast of Big Island. I could totally be butchering that. I knew, I almost didn't buy this one because I know I can get it off Libby, the audiobook for free. With audiobooks, I can't wrap my brain around it as well as I can when I have a physical book. So that is what I picked up from Poets Bookshop. And then the next bookstore um, was in Terabang Books. Um, they are on Lover's Lane. That is like a whole strip of um, like little boutiques and shops. 
it was more like a traditional bookstore reminded me a little bit of like a barnes and noble or something um or even like magic city books which we have here um, in downtown tulsa so they had a lot of things that i did recognize but what i thought was really cool about interrobang books was the new fiction section like the you know the big display at the front of the store there were some things on there that i actually hadn't seen before like things that you're not going to see at a barnes and noble they also highlighted books that either took place in texas or had texas in the title i thought that was really cool um i picked up a few of them but none of them sounded like things that i would really be interested in reading um so i didn't buy any of those what i ended up buying was hernan diaz's in the distance this comes highly recommended by some sunbeams jess if you watch booktube at all i'm sure you've probably heard of her she does like fashion and other content like lifestyle content as well but she has a master's degree in literature and the way that she reviews books you can tell is just like she's very informed like she's very well read i have a bachelor's but i don't have a master's and like i can i can see the difference when she talks about like different literary movements and things like that that influence the writing of a book in the distance is one that she has brought up many many a time on her channel i am already like halfway through it i've been reading about 50 pages a day i started it two days ago um, and it's only like 250 pages. So I'm probably gonna finish it before, today's Friday, so I'm gonna finish it before the end of the week for sure. It doesn't have a synopsis on it. I guess that's because it was a finalist for a Pulitzer and they just assume, like the publisher just assumes like you're gonna buy it because that's, that's enough of a selling point maybe, I don't know. My mom even asked me, she was like, cause she was with us. Um, and she picked up something, I don't remember what she had, and I asked her like what it, what it was about. And then she was like, oh, what's that one about? And I was like, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't have a synopsis. I very, very rarely go in blind. I'm literally just going off of her recommendation um, and it's been excellent so far. I'll do like a full review in my March wrap up, of course. It's pretty excellent. It's following a Swedish immigrant. His name is Hakan. I think I'm saying it right. And he is supposed to come to America lands somewhere he did not mean to land. He gets separated from his brother. This all happens within like the first chapter or two. And ev all the people that he meets and, and everything that happens to him in America is basically what the, the plot consists of so far. A lot of the blurbs on the back talk about loneliness, um, which is something he's experiencing. So it's an immigration story, but it's also a commentary on just loneliness and kind of a, um, a dive into one man's psyche as he copes with being in a foreign land and not knowing the language and not knowing anybody. Something that was really cool while we were there is apparently they do a lot of author events and I kind of wish they have a TV screen like behind the counter, like behind the checkout counter with like the pictures of the authors and their names and the dates and everything. If I had done more research and like known ahead of time, I would have like maybe planned to go on a night when they were doing like an author signing because those are always so much fun. Whenever I worked at the bookstore, that was always like a big deal like that was always you know we would spend all day prepping and like putting up chairs and rearranging things and um, getting out the books and doing a little display and so that was always really fun so I did only buy the two books um, I'm just not doing big hauls so that's just kind of not my vibe um, I actually ordered a couple things off of eBay recently um, so I'm gonna be doing a spring TBR I'm pretty excited the weather's starting to warm up we've got some Sun finally I've been in desperate need of the sun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me some video ideas below. I think one of my next ones will be my Chuck Palahniuk video, finally. I know I've promised that video for so long. That'll be next. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.